Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Regional Admission Counselors of California Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening this evening, so be sure to sign up for ones after this at the same website where you registered for this one which is also where recordings of this presentation and all others will be available in about a week's time. I'm now pleased to turn it over to our presenters and we'll begin this evening with Washington State University. Hi everybody, let me just get my uh, screen shared here. And there we go. Yeah, so my, whoops. My name is Matthias Caldwell. I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for Washington State University. Uh, WSU is a public research university located uh, up on the eastern side of Washington, right along uh, the border with Idaho. Uh, we are kind of that classic college town in really every sense of the word, you know, Pac-12 Division I sports, Greek life, strong academics, and, and a residential campus where everybody's living, you know, either on campus or very close to campus uh, during a normal year, that is. And so uh, we are kind of that classic college town that you might have uh, heard of or seen in a movie or on TV. Um, I always like to start with this kind of aerial shot of campus just because I feel like it gives a really good indication of what to expect from WSU. You can see that kind of classic red brick buildings, lots of trees. Uh, it's a beautiful campus set against a, a picturesque background, uh, and it is a pretty manageable campus as well. You know, you can walk across campus from one side to the other in about 15, 20 minutes. So it isn't uh, a massive campus, but it's not tiny either. It's kind of right there in that sweet spot right in the middle. Uh, like I said, we're located on the eastern side of the state from uh, of Washington, so we're about five and a half hours drive from, uh, you know, the coast over in Seattle area. Uh, and I think the big thing to point out is that, you know, unlike the west side of the, the state of Washington, which gets a lot of rain, we actually don't. There's a mountain range that cuts the state in half. And so uh, the eastern side of the state gets all four seasons, which means that the really the big difference is that instead of that rain in Washington that you might be uh, uh, assuming is going to happen, uh, what we're actually going to get is a lot of snow in the wintertime. So we're one of those places you're going to need a good, uh, you know, a good beanie cap and a jacket and some boots. Um, we are a relatively small college town. So just over 30,000 people in town and about 20,000 uh, 20, of those, give or take, are students. And so campus really does dominate uh, the town. About two thirds of town is made up of campus. Uh, those students. And then the rest of it is really faculty, staff, and a couple thousand diehard locals who love the Cougs. And so, you know, it really is a unique place to go uh, to school where all four years you're around people who are doing the same things as you, plugging into the same things. You can build relationships easily, uh, making that easy to kind of build that community around you. It's one of those places where the average age in town is about 21, 22 years old. So just very, uh, very unique. Um, you know, everything you do, the people you meet, the places you go, it's all going to revolve around the college life, the college experience, which just gives a real buzz in the atmosphere surrounding uh, that college experience, if that's what you're looking for. Um, even though we are a relatively small town, the campus, like I said, is 20,000 students, give or take. So it's pretty big still. Um, not huge, but not small. It's kind of right there in that, that sweet spot in the middle. And, and because of that, there's a ton of things happening on campus still. Uh, we are a Pac-12 Division I athletic school, and that's a big part of our ethos. This image right here gives you a really good indication of what people are doing on a Saturday afternoon home game in the fall during a normal year. Um, but even if you're not interested in athletics, there's a ton of other things happening. Uh, we bring a lot of entertainment to campus, you know, comedians, uh, musical performers. We have over 400 student-led clubs and, uh, and activities on campus. So everything from in recent years, there's been, uh, you know, the Humans vs. Zombies Club, the Peanut Butter and Jelly Club. We've had the Hammock Club for people that just want to hang out with their friends in hammocks. Uh, we've had the Raptor Club, people that, you know, want to do something a little more environmentally focused and, you know, rehabilitate injured animals. I mean, you name it, it's probably happening. Um, there's also a lot of Greek life on campus, like I mentioned, uh, you know, about 20 to 25% of our student body is taking part in Greek life, so we do feel like that's a, a happy medium there where it's present, it's definitely part of the campus culture, but it doesn't dominate it. Uh, and then a lot of cultural uh, based clubs and activities and intramurals and, uh, you know, community service, especially those intramurals that a lot of students, you know, they're not interested in division one, you know, serious sports, but they want to play club or intramural sports and just have fun with their friends playing badminton, 
uh, you know, flag football, you, you name it, we're, we've got it going on and it's a great way to meet people. We do have a very active student body where people tend to reinvest their time and energy back into the campus community. Um, we are a tier one research university, which means that we are the highest general level or general classification of research school that you can have nationwide. That means there's lots of government funding and resources pouring into our programs, our facilities. It also means our faculty are doing their own cutting edge research on top of teaching. So it, just generally what it does is it creates a real atmosphere for students to get involved, get their hands dirty, so to speak, and get those hands on learning opportunities, you know, through research, lab work, field work, internships, you name it. Uh, of course, because of this, a lot of those hard sciences we're going to be great in things like engineering, agricultural and biosciences, health sciences, we have our own medical school, pharmacy school, nursing school, veterinary school, and a whole host of pre-professional programs as well. Uh, but even though we are a hard science school in many ways, we have a lot of wonderful opportunities in our other departments, our business and communications draw a lot of students as well. Um, we have a lot of students coming in for things like psychology, criminology, uh, our foreign language and cultures department is very robust compared to many universities and even our art department, which is not the biggest department by any means on campus still has a, a vibrant, uh, you know, part of the campus community to play and, and it does have its own art museum on campus. So there's a lot of different ways that students can be successful academically. And then kind of rounding things off, you know, talking about a, a little bit of the, the money side of things. We are a WUI school with the Western Undergraduate Exchange. You've probably heard of that, or you'll hear some of my colleagues talk about that a little bit later in this presentation. Um, but that is, is for uh, students who are coming from Western states, it's sort of a tuition uh, remission reciprocity agreement between states. And basically, as long as you have a 3.6 cumulative unweighted GPA or better, you can qualify for this as long as you uh, have met our other requirements. Uh, and you know it'll knock $11,000 per year off your tuition all four years, which does tend to bring that tuition down to right around that $15,000 mark. So. I know not everybody's coming from California today, but some of you might be tuning in from California. And just to put that into perspective for you, it's kind of right on par with a lot of the UC campuses. And then the Cougar Award as well is available for a slightly less GPA uh, requirement at 3.2 to 3.59 cumulative unweighted with the $7,000 award all four years. And so thank you for my time. Uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'm gonna pass it off to my next colleague. Let me stop here. <laughs> Thank you so much. And our next presentation this evening comes from Loyola University, New Orleans. Hello, good evening. My name is Ricky Alarcon, Assistant Director with Loyola University, New Orleans. Basically, it's just a, another fancy term as a regional representative. Um, I actually live in Dallas, Texas, but I cover all Western states, which includes the great state of California. Uh, Loyola University is a private Catholic Jesuit institution um, located in the city of New Orleans, as you see in my slides here, uh, roughly about 3,200 students, um, faculty, uh, and, you know, 12 to 1 faculty student ratio, and then of course, uh, the average class size listed there at 21. We offer about 110 different academic programs on our campus. And this next slide just kind of breaks down the, the incoming class of fall 2020. Um, as you notice, there's a lot of students do come from out of state. Uh, California, Texas, Florida are top three states, and they kind of just go one, two, and three every other year. Uh, you should also see we're very, uh, very popular with first generation students. We offer great support services for those students that are first time in college. And of course, the female, male, and students of color breakdown, we do have attract, again, I think our city just, uh, it's very diverse, very uh, great food and culture here in the city. So I think that's what uh, attracts a lot of students from different backgrounds and demographics. I did mention earlier, we are a Catholic institution, but again, we do uh, are open to uh, students from all faiths and backgrounds. And then you can see our, you know, our campus is located in the uptown neighborhood, uh, which is actually right across the street from Audubon Park, which is this large green space where students can uh, take a walk or ride your bike, or maybe just read a book under the tree before before or after class. So it's really, really nice part of the city. Um, this is the French Quarter. And you guys have been ever been in New Orleans, the city. That's where all the, the happiness and carnival and all the parades happen. You take uh, St. Charles Street and go west, you'll run into Loyola University there. 
just really quickly kind of want to go over academics since many of you maybe not have heard about what we offer or what we're known for. We have three different colleges, departments, um, the College of Arts and Science, College of Business, and the College of Music Media. Most students are going to know us for our music and media. So of course we have the traditional music performance, vocal music, music education. We also have a lot of programs that are hard to find, such as our music industry studies, which basically not only you learn your talent, your craft, but you also learn the business side, how to negotiate you know, contracts, how to get paid for your songs and stuff like that. Um, also, we have a theater program, uh, digital filmmaking, music therapy, one of the oldest music therapy programs in the, in the US. And so uh, that, that's kind of like a lot of our students, a third of our students will fall into that music and media. Our college and business is very popular as well, since we are a port city, trade, commerce, very important with the community. So again, a lot of our students uh, will get engaged with internships in the community or other companies throughout the city. And then number three is probably our arts and sciences, especially our sciences. We do offer biology, chemistry, marine biology is a specialization under biology. And then actually we are going to start our nursing program this fall 2021, direct entry uh, for those students that want to go into that. And of course, a psychology number four and top, top five is criminal justice, the fifth one there. Again, we are a liberal arts institution, so we do encourage our students to double major add minor. So there's a music major that wants to do foreign language, computer science student that wants to do psychology uh, or a business program or even other music, again, music and media programs. We highly encourage our students to do that. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities for our students to get engaged. Not only we want you to be engaged in our campus with community service, we also want you to be engaged, you know, overseas. You know, we offer a lot of study abroad component uh, classes, and a lot of them can be part of your curriculum. Uh, some of them could be a part of maybe a volunteering program, service learning program as well. For those students that are high achievers, we offer a great honors program where you even actually work in a smaller, even smaller environment, engaging with faculty and staff doing research, of course, and it's more of a discussion-based curriculum instead of a lecture base. So a lot of our students do enjoy that. And so for the last few minutes, I just kind of want to spend some time talking about our admission criteria. Uh, we are test blind, which if you are not familiar with that, that just basically means that we are not requiring um, ACT or SAT scores for admissions and scholarships. So what does that mean for students? Uh, basically, we'll look at these next criteria here. We do a holistic review. So we'll review your, app, your application, of course, showing your extracurricular activities. We'll look at your transcript, letters of recommendation, personal statement would basically use your essay. And again, holistic review, that'll be what we will determine uh, your admissions here at the university. And then these are the deadlines to keep in mind for those students that are juniors planning for next year. And then for our students that are music and media, we highly encourage them to, um, you know, there are additional supplemental items such as a portfolio, interview, audition. So depending on what program you're looking into, uh, that's basically what you'll have to submit. And we do off offer scholarships for those students that are going to go into those programs. Uh, we do offer great merit scholarships, uh, anywhere from 11,000 a year to 23,000 a year. Um, we have some great leadership, our Ignatian, social justice, our leadership scholarships. Uh, we do offer athletic scholarships as well. We are NAIA Division I, which is kind of like it's a subdivision, but a de a definitely competitive within other, uh, within other schools here in the Southeast. And that's basically it. We are open for tours, so I do encourage you to reach out. I'll put my contact information in the chat box. But again, if you have any questions, please put in the Q&A. But we are open for tours. And with that, I'm going to give it back to our, our, our moderator. Thank you so much. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa Aya. I use pronouns she, her, and I am with the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, or UCCS. UCCS is a part of the all public research University of Colorado system. We are the youngest and the smallest in the system. We are actually not that young. Um, we are coming up on our 60th year of being a CU campus, and we're actually not that small when you compare us to not just public universities, but private universities in the state of Colorado. 
we have about 12,000 students who in a couple of weeks will be um, going through their finals for spring semester. In terms of location, we are not far away from the capital city of Denver. We are one hour south of the capital city of Denver and we are actually the second largest city after Denver. Um, our students who are coming from California, it's not that far on a plane. It's about two, two and a half hours from the various California airports. Students can choose to drive. We do allow um, all students, including freshmen who live on campus, um, to bring their cars. You have your own parking structure, actually. Um, we have a wide variety of majors, and from California, I get asked a lot, a lot about certain ones. I get asked a lot about uh, our College of Business, as well as our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We've had um, those majors um, for many years. And then I also get asked a lot about areas in our Helen and Arthur E. Johnson Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Um, you should know that there are a wide variety of internships in um, a lot of our different majors. But in the city of Colorado Springs, um, we have some organizations that you should be aware of because we partner with many of them. In the city of Colorado Springs, um, we are home to several military bases, uh, um, including the US Air Force Academy um, north of us. And then just south of us is NORAD. They keep our skies safe. And because of their presence, we have several defense contractors in town, such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, who often will visit our campuses every fall and spring semester to hire for paid internships, as well as for jobs for students who are getting ready to finish their degree. You'll see on the list here that we do have other areas you can study, including a college of education. If you're interested in getting your degree and getting certified to teach or perhaps to be a high school counselor, we have a school of public affairs with majors in criminal justice as well as social work. And then finally, our College of Letters, Arts and Sciences, where the most popular programs there would be biology, pre-med, psychology, and communication. All of those programs go up to the doctorate level. I just wanna highlight um, our Hibble Center. So we've had uh, for many years programs related to human um, sciences and health and wellness. Also in the city of Colorado Springs is one of the US Olympic tra uh, training centers as well as the headquarters for the US Olympic Committee. And so with that, of course, we have related majors. So those are not uh, new majors. However, they have a brand new building just opened in fall 2020 where students are not only taking classes there, they're also um, participating in undergraduate research with teaching faculty. And on faculty, you should know that we also have at least um, eight of them who have their medical degree, their MDs, and so they're host, um, seeing patients in there. So our students definitely get exposed um, to a lot of different opportunities. So please check out the Hibble Center, hibblecenter.org. Our University of Colorado campus in Colorado Springs does participate in the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. Not all of the CU campuses do. And we do it automatically. All majors except nursing um, will automatically receive that upon acceptance. Our students who are accepted into our nursing program can apply for what is called the PEAK scholarship, which brings the student almost down to the same amount as WUI. And then on the bottom, you'll see just a couple of examples of other scholarships that you can apply for. One being the Chancellor's Leadership Class Scholarship, which can be stacked on top of either the WUI tuition or onto the Peak Scholarship. The Presidential Scholarship is not a stackable award. However, it does better than the WUI tuition discount where WUI tuition is resident tuition times 1.5 if you get the presidential scholarship, it would uh, be resident tuition times 1.1. I do have to use this last slide to um, highlight our wonderful location. Um, this shot was taken from one of the mild hiking mountain, uh, mountain, mountain biking trails that sit right above our campus. We sit on a hill in the northern part of Colorado Springs and we take up 500 acres. You can see that our students, faculty, and staff alike enjoy this awesome view, view of America's mountain, Pikes Peak. And then you can also see um, the red rock formation, Garden of the Gods, um, which is just 10 minutes away. So we um, have a wide variety of different outdoor field trips that our recreation center runs, um, not just to the Gar uh, Garden of the Gods and various other places. Um, certainly when the snow starts to fall and stick, 
Um, then on the weekends, our ski and snow riders bus um, starts to run and they go up for either day trips or sometimes if they're going farther away um, to some of the farther ski resorts, they will be overnight trips. And so um, like Ricardo at New Orleans, uh, Colorado Springs, we are hosting campus tours. So I will go ahead and drop that link in so you can reserve your spot. We'd love to see you on campus. Thanks. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Just a reminder that the Q&A widget is available should you have questions for specific institutions or broader ones for all of our panelists. Up next, I'm pleased to introduce the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Thank you, Owen. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well this evening. My name is Joanne Germano, and I'm the Associate Director of West Coast Regional Recruitment for the University of Massachusetts. I'm based down in San Diego, but I'm originally from Massachusetts, so I can tell you about the weather. Chances are you have not seen our university, so I like to start with a video. The University of Massachusetts Lowell is a nationally ranked public research university committed to transforming hardworking students into leaders and innovators. With more than 120 majors and more than 70 master's and doctoral programs, UMass Lowell is renowned for its excellence in engineering, computer science, criminal justice, healthcare, and entrepreneurship. Integrated throughout the historic mill city of Lowell, Massachusetts, UMass Lowell's 18,300 students study in world-class facilities on a vibrant, modern campus. The UMass Lowell Riverhawks compete in the NCAA's Division I, led by its perennial powerhouse men's hockey team. UMass Lowell's focus on co-ops, internships, and experiential learning help explain why its alumni enjoy among the highest starting and mid-career salaries for public university graduates in the nation. So that's a quick video of our campus. Here's also a snapshot. We're just north of Boston. So basically right on the New Hampshire border, you can get a direct flight from several airports in California into Boston, jump on the train from downtown Boston, get to our campus within 35 to 40 minutes. So you won't need a car. It's really easy to get around. We're mid-sized public research. So 11,000 undergrads, but our average class size is 25. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. So we're very hands-on. We have students coming from all 50 states, over 100 different countries, and we have over 100 direct entry programs for you to study. We were the first school in the country to have plastics engineering. Those students do a lot of work with prosthetics. We also were the first school in the country to have sound recording technology. Most popular at our university are going to be biology, engineering, criminal justice, and business. If you want to study anything in the STEM, you can take six extra classes and earn a teaching credential at the high school or middle school level. We also have a lot of four plus one options where you could do a bachelor's and a master's in just five years in programs including STEM, business, psychology, and public health, to name a few. We're a big co-op school, so students spend three to six months working with a company. Our Raytheon owns a floor of our engineering facility. They hire a lot of our students after graduation. We have students go out and work with Tesla, Johnson & Johnson, New Balance, just to name a few. Students work with these companies typically in their junior year, spring semester. They're paid $25 to $35 an hour in the co-op. And because of them, 95% of our students are employed within six months of graduation. We partner with over 200 companies across the globe. So you don't have to necessarily be in our Boston area to work with a company, you could go down to Florida, go down to Texas, come back to California if you wanted. If you're interested in studying nursing or public health or exercise science, we do a lot of research and clinical work at Massachusetts General Hospital and the Boston's Children's Hospital, as well as a Leahy Clinic. Those are nationally ranked healthcare facilities, so you shadow a lot of top doctors and nurses in your, in your practice. We also have a lot of fun on campus. In a normal year, we have 10 concerts. We've had Drake and Billy Joel and Snoop Dogg come to campus to perform. We've also had Oprah on campus to help fund 
to help fundraise scholarships for our students. We're Division I in athletics. Uh, being a New England school, our ice hockey team draws a lot of fans. Those games are a lot of fun. We partner with over 300 different universities in 40 various countries for study abroad. We have scholarships to help cover the travel costs to study abroad for you too. And we have what we call LLCs, living learning communities. So if you are a business student, you can choose to live in a specific residence hall for other business majors where you film, where you form that stronger sense of community on campus. We look for a strong B average. When you apply, you can fill out the Common App, the Coalition App, or our own application. I'll receive a fee waiver code, so you can reach out to me and I'll send you the codes you can apply for free. Our averages are on the screen, but if you don't meet those averages, that's okay. We're test optional and we plan on being test optional in the future. We've been test optional the last five years or so now. But we do what's called a holistic review. So we're not just gonna accept or deny based on grades or if you send us tests, those two. We're gonna look at your essay, your letter of recommendation, your extracurricular, all of that before we make a decision. The application you fill out for admission is the application that will qualify you for a merit scholarship. So there's no extra application you have to fill out. There are great merit awards that you can qualify for. They range from 10,000 to 20,000 and they're all renewable until you earn your bachelor's. Feel free to check us out virtually. We have a virtual tour on our website, as well as a virtual view book. And we're also open on campus for tours. I'll drop my information in the chat. I'd love to talk to you more and thank you for joining us this evening. Great. Thank you so much. We will have time for Q&A at the end of this program, but um, so be sure to get those questions in. But for now, I'm pleased to present the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. My name is Natasha Roberts. My pronouns are she and her. I am the regional recruitment specialist based in California for the University of Nebraska Lincoln. We are a large public tier one research university located in, you guessed it, Lincoln, Nebraska. We are a land grant university and the flagship institution for the state of Nebraska. With just over 20,000 undergraduate students from all over the country and world, we're actually one of the smaller populations within the Big Ten. Uh, we have a student to faculty ratio of 17 to one with an average class size of 31. So we really pride ourselves on giving individualized, personalized attention to every single student, do a really good job of making that big school feel small. We are a part of the Big Ten Alliance, which means our Division I athletics are a part of the Big Ten Athletic Conference. And what that means for you is big game days, right? So there's really nothing compared to college sports in the Midwest. The whole city decked out in red on game days, our school pride and traditions means you're a part of something bigger at Nebraska, not only as a part of our campus, but also as a part of the community of Lincoln. Lincoln is the ultimate college city with our campus interconnected to downtown. It is the heart of what has officially been called the Silicon Prairie with over 100 startup companies hiring directly from our university. It also offers over 150 miles of hiking and biking trails, as well as nearly the highest amount of parkland per capita in the country. So Lincoln is that perfect, perfect combination of city and nature. Um, you've probably heard of other schools being within college cities. Some of them are here with us today, but what makes Lincoln the ultimate college city is the affordability, safety, and friendliness. So Lincoln is ranked the second most affordable college town in the nation, and UNL is ranked in the top 100 safest college communities. But the biggest bonus is that people are super duper friendly, which makes it the perfect place for college students and young professionals. We are actually so friendly in Nebraska that the state slogan is Nebraska nice. We offer over 150 different programs amongst nine different colleges as broad as engineering and architecture to as specific as food technology for companion animals. We also have PGA golf management. We have 31 different majors in agriculture. Our actuarial science program has a reputation for being one of the best in the country. So that's risk management if you're interested in that. Our College of Business is one of less than 200 programs with an accreditation in both business and accounting. 
Our journalism program has the first of its kind journalism drone laboratory. We also pioneered one of the world's first um, undergraduate psychology programs and symposiums. And our ceramics program is ranked number ninth. So as you can see, any direction you go, you'll find a stellar program, incredible opportunities. Um, we are the only call of College of Engineering in the state of Nebraska. So that means that all of our funding in the state for resources and research um, towards engineering are going to our students. Um, our most popular majors this year were business administration, criminology and criminal justice, sports media and communication, animal science and marketing. Students are directly admitted into their major and no one on our campus has ever heard of the word impacted. Um, it's just not a thing in Nebraska. Our exploratory and pre-professional advising center helps to guide undeclared students. Um, that also provides that pre-health, pre-law, pre-vet, um, pre-nursing tracks. We also have three different honors programs as well as a teacher scholars academy for students looking for that more elevated individualized education. And as a tier one research institution, we're all about collaborating with your peers and colliding with hands-on research and experiences. We have over 500 clubs and organizations to get involved in like our livestock judging team or our theme park design club. We have dozens of centers and resources on campus, uh, such as our Office of Academic Success and Intercultural Services, or our Career Services, many, many more. In terms of research and internships, to show you the extent of our facilities on campus, we have 12 laboratories in our computer science and engineering program alone. We have greenhouses and horticulture laboratories, a tractor test laboratory, research farm, students in our forestry classes get harnessed up and hang in our trees on campus, our architecture and interior design students are using our design laboratories for their fourth year collaborative design projects. You could also be gaining hands on experience through our first year learning communities within our freshman residence halls. So we offer 28 different learning communities. They offer a great way for students to learn together and gain experiences. You're not just connecting with other freshmen, but also upperclassmen mentors, as well as faculty and staff. You can also have an exclusive seminar specifically for your learning community. But ultimately, everything I mentioned today is to give you a fantastic education so you can go on and do big things, right? That's what it's all about. So whether it's starting a company, working for NASA or John Deere, creating salad dressings that are on the shelves of Target, our students graduate from Nebraska and make their mark on the world. Here's just a fraction of the companies our students are working for um, after they graduate from Nebraska. Our Huskers are going on to do some pretty awesome things, and we know you'll do some pretty incredible things too as a Husker. So how can you apply? At Nebraska, we're pretty straightforward. We are rolling admission from August 1st to May 1st, available on the Common App, Coalition App, and our own institutional application through our website. We have what are called assured admissions requirements, meaning if you meet our performance requirements and our core course requirements, you are guaranteed admission as long as you fill, fulfill all of our dates and deadlines. So that performance requirement is either 3.0 GPA, a 20 on the ACT, a 1040 on the SAT, or rank in the top 50% of your class. If you have that, you're halfway there. Um, then we just look for some core course requirements and you're guaranteed admission. All of our students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships based on your GPA or test score. Um, they can go up to $15,000 or more for out-of-state students. We are test optional this upcoming year. And we do have a scholarship statement, which is a short essay for um, smaller leadership and diversity scholarships. We have a scholarship estimator on our website as well. You can plug in all of your information and see what scholarships you qualify for. We have the lowest tuition in the Big Ten, and we have a guaranteed tuition freeze until 2023. So we're consistently ranked a best buy and best value school. Our mission at Nebraska is accessibility and affordability. We're one of the few universities that have been offering in-person campus tours since the fall. Um, we've been lifting capacity, so please come and visit beautiful Lincoln, Nebraska um, when you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, we do have a lot of virtual sessions as well as online one-on-one um, -on -one academic appointments through our website as well. I'll drop all of that visit information in the chat as well as my personal information. Um, please reach out to me when it's time to apply. I can get you a fee waiver code so you can apply to Nebraska for free. But have a great rest of your evening and go Big Red! Great, thank you so much, Natasha. At this point, we'll bring back all of our presenters as we do have some time remaining in the session. And if you have any questions that are broad for all of our panelists, certainly feel free to drop those in using the Q&A widget. But I think one question that's 
quite commonly asked of prospective students as they're looking at different campuses is what a kind of event or tradition, just something that your current students really look forward to um, every single year, if you wouldn't mind sharing those. And we can start off going in the, the same order as our initial presentations. Right, so a lot of different things happening on the WSU campus, um, but I know that one thing that is a little unique to the WSU campus and something that students always look forward to when they come back from being away from this, for the summer or something like that, is just the fact that we have uh, a really famous uh, dairy creamery on campus and our Cougar Gold cheese is renowned across the country. And so you'll, uh, you'll enjoy spending money on cheese, probably the most money you'll ever spend on a wheel of cheese. I bought a $30 wheel of cheese the last time I went up and it's well worth it. Uh, and the Cougar Gold gets worked into um, all sorts of, you know, cream cheese spreads that go on bagels at some of the different eateries on campus. And so it's just kind of a fun tradition to go get some ice cream, get some cheese when you come back to campus. And I know the gentleman from Loyola was having an issue with his internet and messaged me. So um, he may not be present right now, but we'll go on to the next institution. Yeah, so at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, we have, uh, we are an NCAA Division II school, so we have a lot of spirit activities around our various sports, both in the fall and in the winter. Um, but I gotta say my favorite time uh, of, be, you know, being on campus is when the first snow falls. Um, it's very exciting for my students from California. I grew up in Hawaii, so I know that my students from Hawaii, they'll run out and just be um, dazzled by the first snow um, falling, because for some of them, it's their first time seeing snow, not just on the ground, but actually falling from the sky. And at UMass, I would say our United in Blue event, it's our first hockey home opener where we don't have football, we have ice hockey, that's our sense of camaraderie on campus that football brings to other institutions. But during our United in Blue event, our students get their own blue shirts in our hockey arena. These, this game typically sells out and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so I can't not talk about Husker football. Um, behind me, you see Memorial Stadium. It seats 90,000 people. Um, so I think one of the big traditions on campus is being able to run onto the field um, during that welcome week. So it's called a tunnel run where all of our students get to flood onto Memorial Stadium and they, and they get to take their class photo out on the field this last year, obviously, that wasn't able to happen. We're hoping it will happen in the fall. Um, so they did a virtual class photo, but hopefully Husker football will get back this fall. So we're excited for that. Uh, sorry, I do apologize. Kind of got some technical difficulties. We got some inclement weather in the area. So uh, the internet kind of spotty right now, but I believe you guys are talking about traditions and, and things on campus. We do a day, it's called Snow Day, and it's spelled S-N-E-A-U-X, our Cajun style of, of spelling. And basically what we do, we bring these big machines like throw, like they make artificial snow in the front of our of our administration building. We invite uh, the faculty, community members, uh, students, of course, and then the faculty can bring their kids. And so basically it's like we can have a snow fight or build a snowman in front of our campus. So when that one day in December, right before finals, it's kind of like a way to kind of let loose and have some fun, even though we don't get snow here in Louisiana. Uh, and so just kind of a cool deal that the president comes out uh, takes pictures, selfies, and then have hot coffee with everyone. So that's kind of a cool deal. Great. Thank you all for sharing those, those events and traditions with us. And then to kind of wrap things up, we do have many students kind of earlier in their college search who are watching this webinar. And if you have any kind of tips or suggestions about how to best approach and navigate the college search process, I'm certain they would appreciate hearing those. And we can go in same order again, if that works best. Uh, my, my big piece of advice for students is always the same. Uh, I, I always, always tell students not to get tunnel vision. A lot of students when, and myself included, when I was in high school looking at colleges, I had my, my laser focus on the one thing that I was looking for, which in my case was an athletic sport that I was, you know, interested in playing. But, you know, the majority of students change majors during their college career. 
your personality is going to change, your interests are going to change. So try to find something that ticks off the boxes on a number of different levels of what we would call fit. You know, everything from the social aspect to the academics aspect to activities to location, size of school, um, cost of attendance, things like that. And try to make sure you're picking a school um, that ticks off at least a handful of those, if not the majority of those categories. Otherwise, when you do change and you will change, um, you know, you could be stuck in a place that isn't the right fit for you now that you aren't interested in that major you thought you were or that sport you thought was your life. So that's my big piece of advice. Don't get tunnel vision. I tell students to look at the cost because I'm a business, I was a business major. So I'm always thinking about finance, having those discussions. So net price calculator is very important. That's a site on our, usually the financial aid, uh, financial aid portion of their websites where you can put in the family's income. Some schools have scholarship uh, calculators where you can put in your, since we're test blind, it's GPA, but if there's test requirements uh, or optional, you can play with, put the test scores in there and kind of see what scholarships you can get. That way you can have those conversations and with your family and kind of see or with you know even with your counselor seeing what you need to do to, to raise that GPA or get that test score up or even again if you have the finances again because we want to make sure that you're selecting a college that's definitely you know in your means or, or very reachable goal for you so definitely check those websites out. So this past year, I uh, watched my oldest son, who is a high school senior, go through the college search process. And um, one of the things I encouraged him, and I also had to remind myself as a parent, to tune out the social media noise. There's those TikToks out there that students will put a snapshot of their statistics and their test scores and their GPA, and they'll say, these are the schools I got into. And you just need to ignore that and pay attention to your list. Your list should look different from all of those students and you are more than just a snapshot on TikTok. You are about to spend a good amount of time on your college application and so be true to yourself. I like to tell students to um, try and be relaxed with it, not too relaxed where you're missing deadlines. Make sure you keep track of the deadlines of the applications and the scholarship but understand that we were in your shoes once too during this process. So feel free to reach out to us, whether that's as a sophomore, whether it's junior year, whether it's the start of senior year, if you have any questions, whether it might be, what does your computer science student look like in terms of GPA and test scores, or what do students do for fun on the weekends? Feel free to ask us those questions whatever you have, whether it's via Zoom or over email or over the phone, we work for our admissions offices. We wanna help you get into our universities. And we also wanna advocate for you in terms of scholarships. So um, just don't be shy, contact us. So my advice is always the same. Let's take everything that everyone said tonight and get organized with it. So whether you use Excel or you are like me, you like to write things down, make a list, um, keep everything organized. We're all going to have different online portals. They're all going to have different ID numbers and different um, par parts of you know, passwords and login information. That's super simple and something you can just easily get organized with. All of our dates and deadlines, we probably all have different dates and deadlines. So write those down. Um, are you going on a campus tour? Believe me, they're all going to blur into one thing. You're not gonna remember which campus said which thing. Write it down, be that person on the tour that has a clipboard and is writing down what each university offers. Because when you get back home and you sit down, you have all those pamphlets, it's just such an easy way to keep everything organized. And then you can really think about what everyone else said tonight and the things that are important to you and all of that type of stuff. So um, being able to focus on the fun things and the tours and the things that are important to you without all of that um, practical stuff, getting that out of the way is really going to help you um, navigate that whole process. And that's what we're here for, right? We're here to help you with all of that too. So reach out to us as well. Great. Thank you all for sharing that great. Um, advice with us and thank you to all of our viewers for joining us this evening as well. At the conclusion of this webinar, you'll be prompted with a brief 
four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, just a reminder that this is one of many different sessions that's happening and there's more that are taking place in just a few minutes. You can register for those at the same website where you registered for this one. And that's also where recordings of all sessions will be available in about a week's time. Thanks again and have a great night.